Number 5. The Rodney King Case In a shocking incident in Los Angeles, California, a routine traffic stop on March 3, 1991, escalated into a horrifying display of police brutality. Rodney King, an unarmed African-American man, became the target of excessive force by the Los Angeles Police Department. Initially pulled over for suspected DUI, King resisted briefly before complying. What unfolded next was beyond anyone's expectations. Without justification, officers subjected King to a brutal beating, striking him over 50 times with their batons. Despite King's attempts to defend himself, the relentless assault was captured on film by bystanders, an extraordinary event in an era before cameras were ubiquitous. King suffered severe injuries, including broken bones, a fractured skull, and internal trauma. The release of the shocking video sparked nationwide outrage, leading to protests against police brutality that united African American and Latino communities. In a highly anticipated trial, the officers faced charges of assault with a deadly weapon and excessive force. However, a cleverly edited video presented by the defense obscured crucial evidence, resulting in the acquittal of all four officers. The verdict triggered a wave of riots and unrest in Los Angeles, exposing socioeconomic disparities and racial tensions. The city descended into chaos with extensive looting, burning, and violence, lasting six days and causing numerous casualties and an estimated $1 billion in damages. President George H.W. Bush expressed astonishment at the verdict, while the Department of Justice retried the officers, leading to convictions for two and dismissal from the LAPD for the others. Rodney King filed a lawsuit against the city, ultimately receiving a $3.8 million settlement. Decades later, the case remains a powerful symbol of racism and systemic issues within law enforcement agencies raising questions about unrecorded violence. It serves as a poignant reminder to address police misconduct and seek justice for all members of society. Number 4. NYPD Detectives' Shocking Perjury Scandal Formerly hailed as one of the New York Police Department's NYPD, most esteemed and courageous detectives, Kevin DeSormo's reputation took a devastating turn when he was charged with perjury. DeSormo had been celebrated for his outstanding performance and received a prestigious Valor Medal following a shootout in Queens. His track record boasted an impressive tally of 350 arrests, predominantly for drug and firearm offenses. However, in a dramatic courtroom revelation during the trial of a man named Daryl Williams, DeSormo's fabricated testimonies unraveled. CCTV footage presented by the defense clearly showed Daryl's absence from the alleged crime scene. This evidence led to DeSormo being charged with perjury, exposing a web of lies that extended beyond this particular case. An internal investigation into DeSormo's conduct unveiled a pattern of deceit spanning several years, resulting in wrongful incarcerations. Alongside DeSormo, Fellow officers Sasha Neve and Oscar Sindino were also implicated in providing false testimonies. Ultimately, DeSormo was found guilty of perjury, official misconduct and false statements, leading to a five-year prison sentence and his dismissal from the NYPD in 2015. In the wake of this shocking misconduct, District Attorney Melinda Katz initiated a review of cases where DeSormo served as a witness. As a result, 60 cases were dismissed, acknowledging the irreparable damage to DeSormo's professional credibility. While the convictions and dismissals highlight the extent of corruption, they leave Queen citizens grappling with unsettling questions about the integrity of those entrusted to be their heroes and protectors. This landmark case stands as a glaring example of police misconduct, with another case involving police brutality and the subsequent burning of Los Angeles looming on the horizon. Number 3. Horrific Police Brutality In 1997, a horrific case of police brutality unfolded in Brooklyn. Justin Volpe committed unspeakable acts of violence against Abner Luima, a Haitian man. Luima was arrested at a club in East Flatbush after a fight, but Volpe wrongly believed Luima had punched him. While in custody, Volpe and another officer beat Luima, but the worst was yet to come. Volpe took Luima to a bathroom in the precinct and sodomized him with a broomstick handle. The assault was witnessed, but the weapon was never found. Luima suffered severe injuries, including a ruptured colon and bladder. The incident sparked outrage, 
with protests demanding justice for Luima and criticizing the NYPD. Volpe pleaded guilty and was sentenced to 30 years in prison. The judge condemned his heinous crime, acknowledging its impact on Luima, the police department, and society. Volpe's appeal for early release due to COVID-19 concerns was denied. He is scheduled for release in 2025. Number 2. From Protector to Predator In February 2013, the streets of Southern California became a haunting stage for terror. Christopher Dorner, a former Los Angeles Police Department officer, embarked on a nine-day reign of fear, targeting his former colleagues. But what led this once upstanding citizen down such a dark path? Dorner's journey began with dreams of becoming a police officer, fueled by a passion that sparked during his youth. However, his time at the police academy was marred by clashes with authority and a suspension for accidental firearm discharge. The final blow came in 2007 when he made an official complaint against his field training officer for alleged brutality. Despite evidence supporting his claims, Dorner was dismissed from the force, igniting a fury that consumed him. Seething with anger and a sense of injustice, Dorner's personal life crumbled. Alienated from loved ones and battling severe depression, he blamed the LAPD for his downfall. His manifesto, an outcry against lies, racism, and excessive force, demanded the clearing of his name. Tragically, before it went public, Dorner had already begun his violent rampage. With twisted logic, he targeted innocent individuals connected to the LAPD, leaving a trail of death and devastation. The police launched an intense manhunt offering a substantial reward for Dorner's capture. Yet his calculated movements kept authorities on their toes, leading to mistaken shootings and injuries of innocent bystanders. Finally, cornered in a cabin in Big Bear Lake, Dorner engaged in a fiery shootout with law enforcement. Refusing to surrender, he perished in the inferno he had ignited, leaving a chilling legacy behind. While many condemned Dorner's actions, his manifesto resonated with some who felt marginalized by the system. Support pages emerged, airing grievances against the police, revealing a deep-seated mistrust. The incident forced the LAPD to re-examine their practices and strive for transparency. Renford Reese, a political science professor, emphasized that dismissing Dorner as a deranged individual falls short of addressing the underlying issues within institutions like education, the military, and the police. Dorner's transformation into a monster serves as a stark reminder of the complexities and flaws embedded in our society. Number 1. Deadly Game Turns Fatal In a shocking incident that unfolded on January 15, 2019, St. Louis police officer Nathaniel Hendren was arrested and charged with the death of off-duty officer Caitlin Alex. The tragic event occurred while both officers were at Hendren's house, engaging in a deadly variation of Russian roulette. According to reports, the officers took turns firing a gun at each other, and it was during this deadly game that Hendren allegedly pulled out a loaded gun and shot Alex in the chest, resulting in her untimely death. While Hendren's lawyer argued that the shooting was a tragic accident, Alex's family accused him of playing the dangerous game with his girlfriend. Investigations into the incident revealed troubling details. It was discovered that the gun had been loaded with five rounds, contradicting Hendren's claim that there was only one bullet. Furthermore, the bullet was fired from a distance of over a foot, casting doubt on the accidental nature of the shooting. Hendren, however, maintained his innocence, claiming that he would never intentionally harm Alex, as they were in a loving relationship and planning to move in together after her divorce. However, Alex's husband refuted Hendren's claims, stating that their marriage was perfect and there were no discussions of divorce. The evidence against Hendren led to his arrest and subsequent charges of first-degree involuntary manslaughter, armed criminal action, first-degree endangerment, and perjury for providing false statements. Initially contesting the accusations, Hendren eventually pleaded guilty to the charges of involuntary manslaughter. In a widely covered case that drew national attention, Hendren was sentenced to seven years in prison. The incident shed light on the seriousness of the misconduct by someone entrusted with the responsibility of law enforcement, prompting significant criticism of the St. Louis Police Department.